Today I'm demonstrating how to set up a recipient created tax invoice. There are three steps to set up and we do those before we start. We won't need to repeat this every time, just when you have a new supplier. So the first thing we want to do is check the chart of accounts. So we're going into accounts, chart of accounts, we want to make sure that there's an expense account to take these expenses. In my case, I'm paying contractors and I'm just going to search for contractors and I have the accounts there that, that I want. I have contractors with no GST and it's GST free and contractors with GST. So I'm right, but if you're not, add the accounts here that you need. Now the second step is to add the items, the types of things, so in products and services, so in business, then products and services. We need an item here that are the items that our contractors are going to be selling. So it's the things that we're purchasing and we're producing these invoices for. Now there's golf balls, there's all sorts of things here, but for me, I'm wanting a new item and I'm wanting um, a contracting item. Now it's an item that we purchase, it's not an item that we sell. So I'm just setting this up as a purchase item and I'm going to call it contractor and the name contracting services and the cost price. You don't actually need to, to, um, to complete these. I'm going to have its GST um, on expenses and I might just make that contractor GST and I'll have a separate one for contractor with no GST, contracting services GST. So I'll make a separate one, a new item and it's going to be contractor, no GST, contractor, no GST. And again, I'm going to grab GST free expenses. It's a purchase, we don't sell it, and I'm going to save it. So it's a good idea to get your accountant to help you set those things up. Um, for our clients, if we've helped you with this process, we will have set that up for you. Now, the third item is the actual contacts. So these are the people that we are purchasing things from and that we are preparing these recipient created tax invoices for. So we want to go into contacts, suppliers and essentially you'll only need to do these steps as I've said in the beginning so when you've initially setting these people up. So we might have a new contractor and it might be you know, ABC contractor now the account number is a, new, a unique account number, you don't actually need that. Um, zero managers to find, zero managers to find uh, the, the names under the name. You can record all of these things, first name, last name, but the essential things are the, the email address um, and the ABN is important as well. And I would um, also put some sort of address in there. Um, so the ABN, and the, these are the important things. So we've got an address. So billing address and delivery address, that's kind of important. One, two, you know, Smith Street. That's looking for it. Okay, that'll do. Um, at the address. And the financial details are also very important. So you do need the bank account name, I would call it, you know, ABC contractor, and then their BSB and their account number. And, okay. And it's not a valid one. <laughs> okay. And um, you might, the reference might go through. I'd leave that blank because I'd like to be able to put that in each time. Sales defaults, we don't need purchase defaults. The purchase account 
for this particular contractor is always going to be a uh, contractor with no GST. We know this guy's a contractor with no GST and um, there's probably not a lot extra there that we need to fill in. So they're the main things to fill in. Once you've got that set up, you can move on to the to the next section and um, and actually process. So this is like a setup to start with. Once you've got this going and you've got all your, your regulars in here, uh, the next two steps uh, in terms of producing that invoice and getting it paid is, uh, is really quite straightforward. Now there is one more setup step and uh, for our clients, we will do this for you. You don't need to do it. It's probably the most difficult step. We need to go into zero, first of all, and find a template. Now, if we go to zero and search for recipient created tax invoice template, it should take us to here and to zero central and give us that template. This is it here, it's a docx file. We want to open it and we just want to download it. So there is a little download button there off the screen and I'm downloading it and keeping it. And this is the format of the recipient created tax invoice. As you can see, it's not uh, rather beautiful. It's, it's quite basic, but it does serve the purpose and it does simplify the whole process for you. So we're hopping out of here now and then back to zero. Now we're going to import that as a purchase order template. And, and the whole trick of this is we, we trick the purchase order system to thinking it's a recipient created tax invoice. So we're going into settings, invoice settings. We're going to do a new branded theme and we're going to use that custom doc. We're going to title it recipient created tax invoice or you might want to type that whole thing out recipient created tax invoice uh, created tax invoice is, is the way I'm going to do it and okay now it's going to ask us we're going to find that we've got the standard special projects and here we have recipient created tax invoice that we've just made we're going to upload the template as a purchase order. Now that's really important. We just want that as a purchase order. We're going to find it, open it and upload it. Now we'll go back to that um, again and we're going to edit the theme. Personally, I would get rid of everything out of here and leave just the purchase order template. We don't want to use any of these and we don't want this theme used in credit notes or anywhere else. We only want it used in purchase orders because it's only purchase orders that we're using to trick the, the system. We could use that. I would change it to draft recipient created tax invoice. And this one here, I would call that recipient created tax invoice. Um, we're not going to use it in quotes. So really we just have two things there we have um, the purchase order and the draft purchase order because they're the only templates that we're using in this theme, then okay. Right here, now we can move on to the next step. Again, our clients, we will have done this step for you and um, you'll have the template already in there.